Hello and welcome to this video in the series INAF for Beginners 2023. I'm going to put a link down below to the rest of the videos in this series if you haven't watched them already. The reason that I'm pulling this particular topic out to make its own video on is it's probably the one I get the most questions on. And that is how do I make sure that the controls are working in the right direction or my controls aren't working or and loads of other issues that I bump into regularly. Now I've been making our videos for a very long time. So this is probably one of the top questions that I get. So having a separate video that I can point to is gonna be pretty handy. So if you've been pointed to this in one of my replies to your comments, the answer that you're looking for should be in here. Now, this is the wing that I've been building out as part of this. This is the Baby AR Wing Pro with a Express LRS receiver in here and a Walksnail HD system in the nose. And it has gone incredibly well. And I've skipped over going through in detail exactly how you set all the control surfaces up. So this is the video if you're having problems for you to kind of explain how that all works. Couple of top tips if you don't watch any more of the videos, this is the stuff you need to know. The radio does need to be set up as I've already shown. I will talk about it in the bench work we're going to do in a moment. You do not reverse any channels in your radio for the control services. Throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, or elevator, aileron, elevator, rudder, whatever order you have them in, they need to be in the same direction. If you start reversing things in your radio, you are on a hiding to nothing. Next thing, the servos need to be plugged in in the correct position on the flight controller. They're clearly labeled on the flight controller schematics and they also in INAV configurator, it tells you exactly where every servo should plug in. Be careful that you're doing that and you're also plugging them in the right way round, not the wrong way, i.e. the ground pin is plugging in to the ground wire, vice versa. Do also make sure that the outputs are enabled. The outputs by default in iNav are disabled. It's one of the last things that you do in order to check everything's moving before you go to the field. Do make sure that that is turned on. It catches an awful lot of pilots out coming particularly from places like iNav where that kind of disabled output feature isn't common. And finally, you need to do the test on the bench, not only when you're setting it up to make sure that the control surfaces work in manual mode, i.e. when you're moving them, but also that iNav corrects them in the right direction too. It's not only for when you are setting up. I would recommend that you do that test every single time before you chuck the model, just to make sure that nothing has gone screwy with it and that it's gonna fly beautifully. This kind of high five test, I'll put a link down below to my video about it, is something that you should do with every fixed wing model before you fly. It's not only to make sure that the iNav setup hasn't gone squirrely with some update or change that you've done, but it's also to make sure things like linkages haven't become loose because you don't want to find that out when you're 120 feet off the floor going at 80 miles an hour. That's when things get exciting. So let's go off the bench and I'll take you through each of those pieces and kind of show you what it looks like in real life. So here on the bench, I have my TX-16S with my Express LRS module in the back. And here is the model that has been built out as part of the series. Now, the two control surfaces here are elevons, i.e. they're do the job of ailerons and elevators on something like a wing like this, but the process is exactly the same if we're using some kind of conventional plane. Now I haven't got it powered, but I definitely have got the prop taken off. We're gonna power this, and then we're gonna check everything is working. A couple of tips about the radio. There is no mixing on the radio. Check the rest of the INAF for Beginners 2023 series. I will put a link down below that talks about that. There is never any mixing, a perspective of whether you're using conventional plane, a V-tail, a wing like this, something like a drone, a multi-rotor or whoop. Any of those models has exactly the same INAV setup. So never ever, if you're trying to play with this, reverse a channel on the radio. It's one of the most common mistakes that I see. And then trying to fix all that because you've done something wrong on the radio, it becomes a house of cards. Channel direction, let's talk about that. As I've shown in the videos already, when the channels are maximum, the stick should be in this position, top right position, and the values for the channels should be at maximum. If they're not, then you need to fix that in the radio. It is the fundamental foundation stone upon which the rest of the setup is built. Never change anything on the radio. Do it as I've shown in the series. And if you are, have it set up, all of the tweaks and things are going to be done within INAV themselves. And I'll show you how to do that. 
So what we're going to do is we'll power the model first of all. I'll just plug it in. We'll also plug it into the computer and we'll also power up the radio so that that's ready too. Welcome to Edge TX. So now we've got everything powered, we can go into the computer and we can connect. So if we go here into the receiver tab, we can see here that as I move the sticks to the top right hand corner, they go to their maximum value here in configurator. That is the way that we want it. On middle channels, I would suggest are exactly 1500. Use the sub trims on the radio to get them there. Now to actually get the servos moving, another common issue that I come across is that the outputs have not been enabled. Now in the outputs tab, here at the very top, we have enable motor and servo output. That has to be enabled in order for the control surfaces to move. Hopefully you can see that there on the screen. If this isn't turned on in iNav, then you know what? The control surfaces aren't gonna work. So make sure that that has absolutely been done. The second thing to do is to make sure that the servos are installed in the right outputs. Now here in the flight controller, we have output three and we have output four and they go to the corresponding servos. How we know which is which is in the mixer, it actually shows you which servo is which. So we can see here that the left-hand servo is servo three, the right-hand servo is servo four. So that's where we need to plug it into the flight controller. So here you can see exactly where it's plugged in on mine and make sure that those are the right way round as well. There are rare cases where you may have to swap those over for things like ailerons, but nine times out of 10, that is gonna work absolutely perfectly for you. Now to actually test the movement of the control surfaces, I would recommend going into manual mode on the radio and then moving the control stick. The reason that manual mode is better is that it gives maximum movement, the full movement available on the control surfaces. In something like a stabilized mode, so your angle or horizon, they're gonna move slightly less because some of that movement is kind of reserved for INAV to use to stabilize the plane. So put it into manual mode and then I do it by pulling the stick down for the elevator and both of the elevators come up. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. You can see that that one goes up here on the right. If I get the light on it right, you can see that this left one comes up as well. Now, if one of those is not going in the right direction, what I recommend you do is come in to INAF Configurator and then go into the Outputs tab and reverse whichever channel or servo is the problem. The almost certainly for the aileron is going to have to reverse one or the other, or sometimes even both. Commonly, you're going to have to reverse one. In this particular setup, it was reversing servo three, which is the servo here on the left-hand side. So that is the way that I would test that. Next thing to do is to check whether the ailerons are working okay. This should now work fine if you've got that all the right way around. So if we go roll, you can see that this side is going up. As I put the aileron to the left-hand side, the left-hand control surface comes up on a wing. And similarly, over to the right, the right-hand control surface comes up. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. That is the way that it's supposed to work. There are very, very occasional times when that still won't work. Even though elevator is right, the aileron is wrong in those odd cases, and they are very rare, I would swap over the connections to your flight controller for servo three and servo four and go through and set it up again doing the reversing. I've had that happen to me a couple of times. But now we're at the position where the in manual mode, everything works as expected. And on a plane, I would do that for also your rudder and also your elevator. Your elevator would be separate. So your ailerons would work like this. Your elevator would come up as you pull the elevator stick down and your rudder would go in the same direction or as the stick or the rudder stick. Again, this is a mode two radio. Next thing we need to do is now we have it all checked like that. We need to make sure that in a stabilized mode, 
that the controls are going to counteract any uncommanded movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to flick the radio into either horizon or angle would be my recommendation. And I'm going to move the radio out of the way for this because we don't need the radio for this bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the wing and what I want to see is this control surface as I lift the wing tilt up. And I'm not sure if you're catching that on here, but what's actually happening is as I tilt it up, the control surface is moving up. That's right. And again, on the other side, if I do the same thing, it's, it's the same way. So here, as I've, as I lift it up, you can see here that there's quite a gap. Hopefully the camera's picking that up between the tip. If I put it down, then you can see here that the control surface is pretty much in line with the back. If I lift the wing, it's trying to correct for that uncommanded movement and I can get my whole fingertip in it. So that is the way you want to do it. Also do that same test with the rudder and the elevator in one of the stabilized modes and then you are in a really good state. It means that not only do the control surfaces work in the right way, but you also have them correcting in the right way too. If any of those parts don't work, go back to the beginning and start again. Possibly got these servos plugged in the wrong areas. It's easy to do when you're trying to get everything all sorted. Last thing I'll talk about then is how you reduce the throws. Again, talked about this in the series, but I want it in here so it's one place for newer pilots to come to get all the common gotchas. If the control surface, if I put it back in manual mode, if the control surface is moving too much, you have two options to reduce the throw. For throws for planes like this are usually published in the manual. Uh, something like this needs about eight to nine millimeters, that's all. If it is just a little bit too much, it moves about 10 or 11 millimeters. And when it talks about 10, 11 millimeters, it moves the, means the back edge moves about 10 millimeters up from the middle position and down about 10 millimeters from the middle position. So it's 20 millimeters in total. It's just a slightly weird way it does in a hobby. But what you can do is you can reduce the amount of throw. If it's say 11 or 12 millimeters and you want 10, what you can do is you can connect to the model you can go into the outputs and what you can do is you can change the rates and these will change how far things move. So if I wanted, maybe it was something like 12 millimeters and I wanted 10, I'd change this to something like 80 on both of them and that might help me. But actually what I probably end up doing is if it's more than about 20% here, in INAV, I would actually physically change the linkages to change the amount of movement. These linkages here on the model that go from the servo out to the back here can be adjusted. Now, the way it works is that I have a whole video that talks about how you can adjust these linkages. I'll put a link down below, but hopefully if the plane has been set up half decent from the manufacturer, that should be pretty close. So the common issues that I see that will stop control surfaces working properly like this, first of all, is that the servo output is not turned on in iNav. And again, that's up here at the top in iNav configurator. The second is that the servos are not being powered from a battery. Most of the flight controllers that you're going to have out there will need battery power in order for the servos to be powered. So you need to make sure that's happening. And finally, if you can't get them all moving in the right direction, particularly with something like ailerons, I would potentially just swap those two wires over. GPS, good, ready to fly. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.